I know we said we'd stop at Mara next, but <laughs> let's just pause and let this sink in for a moment. What a miraculous deliverance. <laughs> Welcome to Under My Tree. As we said in the intro, we have to really talk about this miraculous deliverance that we just went through. Your enemies have been totally destroyed and God has proven that he can save you and deliver you greatly. You see his manifested presence in the pillar of fire by night, keeping you from the terrors of the night. And in the cloud by day, keeping you from the harshness of life. This is a time of great thanksgiving and praise. Your God has come through for you. Moses said in Exodus 15 verse 1 to 2, and I'm paraphrasing. One, I will sing unto the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. He is my God. I will prepare him and habitation to celebrate that word nova is to celebrate that's the word for habitation to celebrate to keep at home the implied idea of beauty our praises are so beautiful to god he inhabits them psalms 22 verse 3 to 5 says yet you are holy enthroned on the praises of israel our ancestor trusted you and you rescued them they cried out to you and were saved. They trusted in you and were never disgraced. Listen, you can say, God, you are enthroned on the praise of, and say your name, God, you are enthroned on the praise of Sylvia. Or whatever your name is, I'm Sylvia. I'm Sylvia. Moses continues to say, my father's God, I will exalt him. Listen, <laughs> this is the importance of teaching our children about God and the things that God has done for us because now Moses recognizes, not only is this his father's God, this is my God too, I will exalt him. He goes on to declare in verse 3, the Lord is a man of war. This word war is milkama from the root word lakam. It means a consuming, overcoming God who can make war and prevail. This is the God you serve, you know. This is he's not no little dibby dibby God made of stone or with the works of the hands of man this is the god who can make war the all-consuming the overcoming god who can make war and prevail the lord is his name verse 6 says thy right hand o lord is become glorious in power thy right hand o lord has dashed in pieces the enemy this word pieces is raw at means to vex so the lord will vex your enemies that's why i'm telling you, you know to pray for them to you know pray for them because he's hoping that when you pray for them them will them will turn from them wicked ways you understand so that he can bless them instead of having to destroy them verse 9 speaks about the plans of the enemy remember we're doing exodus 15 here the enemy says, I will pursue, I will overtake, I will divide the spoil. My lust shall be satisfied upon them. I will draw my sword. My hand shall destroy them. Verse 10 to 12 describes how the Lord defended us and destroyed the enemy. Verse 13 says, Thou in thy mercy has led forth the people which thou hast redeemed and has guided them in thy strength unto thy holy habitation. Now, listen to me. When you come to Christ, you know, Remember, he has redeemed you and he has led you out of darkness and is guiding you in his strength, not your strength, in his strength into his holy habitation. So we can be as holy as he's holy. Because if it wasn't possible, he wouldn't tell us to do it. It is not possible in our strength, but it is possible in his strength. Verse 14 to 16 speaks about how the enemy shall hear far and wide how the Lord delivered the people and shall be troubled. And if you move further on in the scriptures into, into Joshua, you will see when the spies went to Rahab, she told them, listen, we heard about what your God did with the Red Sea and to the Egyptians. So the news spread far and wide. 
There's always somebody left to carry the news. Remember Job? Right? Remember Job? When his children died, somebody was left to come and tell him, your children died. Somebody was left to come and tell him, look, all of your cattle dead. All of your possessions destroyed. Somebody was left. When King David's, when Absalom had planned to kill, um, which was the son that did rape him, sister. I uh, think it's Adonijah. He he was this, he destroyed him, but there was somebody to come tell David the news. Look, I know all of his son them not dead, right? There's always somebody to come tell the news. Somebody to to carry that message. Question is, what message are you carrying? But I'm, that is going into another lesson. One day I'm gonna do the lesson about the runner. There was a runner when 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 Absalom died that. He just want to run and carry the news. But he, Job asked him, what news are you going to carry? him? said, no, no, I just want to run. But we're going to go into that in another lesson. But listen, pervading social media for the period of 2017 to 2019, not so prevalent now, but still happening was a lot of enemy focus posts. That is, you know, fake friends, friends who pose as enemies. A lot of it sounded like wise advice. But then the scripture does say that the enemy comes as an angel of light. You see, focusing on the enemy takes our focus from God, which is the enemy's plan all along. He don't want you focusing on God. He wants you to focus on him. And that is not to say you should not know what your enemy is doing. That is not to say that you shouldn't be aware of what they're up to, but it should not be your focus. Now, if you want to see more on perfect focus, I have a video called Bokeh Perfect, perfect, perfect Focus. The enemy can make all his plans, as you saw here in the scripture, but the hand of God shall deliver you greatly. So here are some declarations for you at this time. The enemy shall be too confused to pursue me. The enemy shall not overtake me, even if he is able to pursue. Only the blessings of God can overtake me and ambush me pleasantly. Even if the enemy is able to draw his sword, he'll be powerless to weld it against me. Remember, Psalm 91 says, A thousand will fall on one side, ten thousand on your right, and still none of it can come near you. The enemy's lust shall not be satisfied upon me, but the desires of God for my life shall be fulfilled. The enemy's hand is powerless against the right hand of God to destroy me. I am delivered greatly by God himself. Praise and thank God for your deliverance. Praise him. Because you see, you could have been there on the other side. Remember, you didn't come over slugging in mud. You came over on dry land. Even you wondering how you survived, but you just survived. Huh? You felt hemmed in, you felt shut in. But, and, and as far as the enemy was concerned, you were shut in. They had you trapped. They had you right where you want, where they want you. This is how it is in some workplaces, right? They, they, they are people that go out of their way to make their lives miserable. And if they know your circumstances, they, they, will, they will use it against you. And if they know secrets for you, that's why you don't feel bad have secrets, you know. Let your life be an open book, right? So the enemy can't use it to... Um, to accuse you but you know even those who think that they have caused you to lose your job and you won't prosper whoo you know they know you have light bill to pay loan to pay um water bill to pay rent to pay or mortgage to pay car payments to be made and and there is no way out for you because they are bad mouth you so much that you cannot get a job anywhere but God has come through for you. God has sent somebody, not just to offer your job, but a project. You can start your own consultancy business. You can make your name with this project. Give the glory to God. It says that when a man's ways pleases God, even his enemies will be at peace with him. There will be even some people in the enemy's camp who will think that the enemy going overboard and will help you, probably secretly. And even them will wonder why they're helping you. But give God the glory. So you are facing the Red Sea. And Moses says, stand and watch the Lord deliver you. But he didn't say you were to do nothing. Faith is a verb. He didn't say you were to do nothing. He said you were to 
stand meaning be at peace and watch the lord deliver you and not only that he said step out in the water i mean the lord said to moses while they're standing up there tell them to step out in the water i personally believe this is not doctrine that if people the first person ever put their foot in the water moses would have stand up there with him hand drop off but as i said that's not doctrine that's my opinion but then archaeological finds have shown that at that particular crossing of the red sea there were 12 paths one for each each tribe of israel ha look at that and while you are going across you know when you're going across you're going into this new project your, your enemy is going to be taken by surprise because why God has put himself between you and the enemy. He's lighting your way, but he's darkening their paths. He's looking out at them from the cloud and he's confusing them. And you are delivered greatly. Hallelujah. This is a hallelujah moment. Listen, don't be shy to jump and shout and praise the Lord. Because you see, it is he who delivers you greatly. It's not man. This is why our dependence must be on him. So next week, we're going to stop by Mara. Get some refreshment, sort yourself out, deal with some what a pastor I heard said call our little dirty sit down. You know, little dirty things that sit on inside of us. We're going to stop by the well of Mara next. See you next week.